Hi, I'm uh, Dick Pound, and I'm going to talk about cheating. <laughs> Sport uh, always begins as play, but distortions occur once money, national hubris, and personal status become involved. And I'll give three examples uh, dealing with governance, officials, and athletes. As to governance, the International Olympic Committee, of which I'm a member, had a governance failure prior to the choice of the host city for the 2002 Olympic Winter Games. Several, several of our members had their hands out for inappropriate gifts and benefits. Some had also been targeted by the bidding committee as vulnerable to uh, economic pressures. We launched an investigation, uh, which I chaired, and as a result of that investigation, we expelled or force the resignation of 11 of our members. We then put in place a formal code of ethics, established a, an ethics commission composed of a majority of non-IOC members, all individuals of exemplary reputation, giving the commission a separate budget and an independent authority to inquire into any complaint involving a member of the IOC. Unlike any other International Sports Organization, we now publish annual audited financial statements based on international, uh, recognized international financial standards. We stopped the visits of our members to candidate cities. We opened our annual meetings to the media and to the public. We now publish the contracts pursuant to which we award the Olympic Games. We provide assistance to candidates in, in framing uh, their presentations and we provide assistance to the host cities regarding their preparations. So while nothing is ever perfect, I think the IOC now uh, functions in accordance with best practices and is recognized as so doing. The pity is that it took a scandal to bring about the kind of good governance that ought to have been obvious. Officials. We in Canada do not have to look far to see the impact of corrupt sports officials. In the same Salt Lake City Winter Games that caused the IOC so much difficulty, Canadian figure skaters Jamie Saleh and David Pelche skated to an obvious win in the pairs event. The next best team, the Russians, who had skated before Saleh and Pelche, knew coming off the ice that they had not skated well enough to overtake the Canadians' lead. Uh, in the kiss and cry area, there was far more crying than kissing. And then Saleh and Pelche took to the ice and produced a flawless performance. I was sitting in the arena with the younger Canadian IOC member of the day who was cheering wildly and saying, I go for Canada. And she looked at me and said, well, asked me why I was not equally excited. I said that figure skating was a strange sport and that we should wait for the official results. <laughs> the Russians were awarded first place. No one could believe it, especially anyone who'd watched the performance on the ice. But the competition was not decided on the ice. It was pre-decided in a committee room. The key was a French judge who knowingly marked the inferior Russian performance higher than the superior Canadian performance. The outcome was that years and years of training and sacrifice by the Canadian skaters were trivialized so that some internal deal between figure skating officials could proceed. What's more, the International Skating Federation refused to drop the corrupt mark and replace it with one from a backup judge, which would have produced the proper result. And it took the IOC to, to intervene to force the Skating Federation to agree to award an additional gold medal to Sally and Pelche. Four years earlier in Nagano, the, the chairman of the Ice Dancing Committee asked me if I was coming to watch the finals that evening. I said no. Why not, he asked. I said, because I already know the results. He was insulted with the suggestion. And so I offered a contest in, in which he was by now wrapped very thoroughly in professed outrage and indignation, uh, refused to participate. But the contest would, would be that each of us would write the names of the first eight teams in the order of finish, put it in an envelope with $100 and give the envelope to a third party. And I said that if he answered honestly, we would both get our $100 back, and we would have. Finally, athletes. 
Sport is governed by rules agreed upon by the participants. If you don't like the rules, you are free not to participate. But if you decide to participate, you must do so in accordance with the rules. And if you don't, there are sanctions that range from reprimands to uh, penalties to suspension, even to expulsion, uh, depending upon the gravity of the breach. Uh, a particular rule with which I've had a great deal of involvement over the past few years is that athletes agree that they will not use certain substances and methods for performance enhancement, which is the international term is doping. Now, despite that commitment, many athletes are doped, ruining the competitions for those who have honored their promises. Uh, many doping programs are sophisticated and expensive. Many are designed for athletes by sports officials, medical doctors, and scientists who are perfectly aware that there is no therapeutic justification involved and that the entire purpose is to cheat the other competitors. Don't get fooled by the many claims that you will read uh, that doping is inadvertent. The overwhelming proportion of doping is deliberate cheating. Take Lance Armstrong as a case in point. He resolutely denied doping during his career and ruined the lives of people who dared to suggest otherwise. Well, it turns out, as we all know now, that his performance was all a lie. He was just another tiresome cheater. Thank you.